Good morning, ladybugs. Happy Tuesday. Um, I hope you had fun doing your circle art. Today we're going to do another fun project with another one of my favorite artists. And his name, and I'm not sure if I'm pronouncing it correctly, uh, Miss Carla. If uh, I miss her a lot. And one thing I miss is she's always good at pronouncing things. And if I have a little trouble, she can help me. Uh, she's, she's really knowledgeable that way. But this, I think I'm pronouncing it right. Today's artist is Pierre Mondrin. Um, and it's a Dutch name. Do you remember yesterday, uh, Kadinsky was a um, Russian name. P Pierre um, grew up in the Netherlands, which is in Europe across the Atlantic Ocean and it was well over a hundred years ago but he did abstract art if you remember what that was uh, yesterday it's more modern art he also did something called cubism and here I draw my I drew I drew my cube that we did um, last week with the the math we did the three-dimensional shapes and that's why doing the math and the great artists that we're doing this, this week and last week, it all kind of ties together. Um, uh, and I, that's what I really like about this project. And I even got my three-dimensional cube because um, cubism is more like three-dimensional art. Uh, there's another great artist called Pablo Picasso that I've done in the past, and he has uh, cubism. He has shapes, three-dimensional shapes. Do you remember our shapes from uh, last week? I got them out again. There's our cube. There's our three-dimensional cube. And what do you, do you remember what this was called? The cylinder, right? Oh, and this one, the pyramid, right? Oh, and I was so happy. I looked upstairs. I guess what I found? I found my wooden cone. Remember, I only had the foam cone. So do you see the difference between these two? This one has triangles on each side and a square at the bottom. The cone... The cone has a kind of a triangle shape, but it's round, so it rolls really well. If I was going to roll it, I could roll it across the carpet. It would definitely win the race if you're going to have a race between the pyramid and the cone. The cone would always win. And it has a round bottom. The pyramid has the square bottom. So that's my cone. Ooh, let's see. This is our rectangle and I do I I did forget there is a name for this hmm, maybe you can look it up it's a three-dimensional rectangle and I did forget the name for that but how about this one ladybugs do you remember this one this is really such a fun one actually this would if you had a race between the cone and the sphere what do you think would win well, the cone would do pretty well, but I think the sphere would do better. And then do you remember what this one? This is like a, a half a sphere. And it was called a hemi hemisphere. So it has the word sphere in the word. Okay, so Pierre Mondrian had, had the three-dimensional cubism art, some of his paintings. So... He, he started out as a teacher, actually, and then he painted. Um, if you look at his paintings, he paints lots of different things. He paints landscapes. He liked to go out in nature. He got inspired by being outside, like we talk about. We can go outside and look around, and like we did with our flowers, our Georgia O'Keeffe flowers and things, and our spring watercolor flowers. Um, you can go outside and see what inspires you. Well, he was inspired by nature too, but then after a while, he became interested in 
more abstract art, okay? Art that may not look like something, it may look like different things to different people, okay? He liked, um, he liked, for a while, he liked uh, cube, uh, like square paintings. Remember, uh, Kadinsky did his circle paintings and Pierre Mondrian did square paintings. And if you go, um, if you go online, if your parents are, have a little bit of time, maybe this afternoon, um, PierreMondrian.org, I found some good examples of his paintings. Um, you'll see both kinds, the landscape kind and the squares. Um, and uh, maybe um, that would be fun to see all the things that he did. Okay, so let's see. Um, oh, okay, so just before we start our project, I just wanted to go over here and I have the word lines written here. And Miss Carla was talking about lines on Friday when she was doing your letter review and your number review, right? So it all kind of ties together. But we have our horizontal lines, which go straight across. We have our vertical lines, that says vertical, which go up and down. And then we have our slanted lines. And those are the ones, like when she was making the letter A, some of you may have a slanted line in your name. Um, and so he used, he used lines. He, for a long time, he was really into um, lines and squares. And so I made a really simple one uh, yesterday and it was like I made little boxes so I did use for this one for this painting here I did use a ruler and I measured off I measured off where to draw my black lines do you see these black lines and I made four squares in each in each section here let's see how many we have here let me get my pointer here one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. So I made twelve squares on this piece of paper. But you don't really have to measure. Um, you can see from like this drawing that I did too, which he has a lot like this. He doesn't have all the squares the same size. I just kind of did this as a simple thing because I thought that might be easier for you guys. But if your parents want to help you or if you just want to do it on your own, you can make something like this. And what kind of shapes do you see in this picture? Hmm, there's a lot. I don't really see any round shapes, but I see rectangles and squares, mostly rectangles and squares, big and little. So that would be something that you could do later. Maybe your parents could even make a copy and if they have a printer at home, make a couple of copies and maybe your whole family can, can make something different because it really is fun to do. Um, he also, and we're gonna do this later, he also likes to make, he liked to make hearts. I was going to make, if we were gonna have our open house, I was going to take a big piece of white paper and have each of you make a heart with different lines. You could make them however you want it, okay? And, and then you're going to color them in. So he liked three, he, well, for a while, he went through a time where he only liked three, he, he only wanted to use three colors. Um, the red the, and the blue and the yellow. Hmm, who do you remember that like to use the primary colors, red, blue, and yellow. Do you guys remember? Roy Lichtenstein, yeah, when we did our big action word pictures. He liked these colors too. So for a while, Pierre Mondrian only, only used these colors, plus white and black. Okay, so in order to paint a picture, like I said, you might need to have a little bit of help but you can get white paper and then you can make your lines. I made my lines really thick. I used a black marker. You could try painting them um, or tape. Um, it's a little trickier. Um, so I made 
I made my lines and then I'm going to, I'm going to take this off for a minute so I can put on, I got a lot of sticky tape here so I can put this one on so we can paint that one together. Let's, let's hope the tape stays. Oh, it does. Good. All right. And so then I have my, my palette here that I used, um, I think I used this for well, I think I've been using this for all my paintings. It's actually for food, but it works great. So I'm gonna take a little squeeze of red and take a little squeeze of yellow and take a little squeeze of blue. Oh, and I was gonna show you before I start the painting. Um, I used a ruler, but uh, let me get a towel here. You can also use um, some other things, you remember I have that box in the, in the, um, where we keep the horses in the classroom and, uh, I have some great, um, measuring things. Do you remember that one? That's a cool way to measure. Or a lot of you made a picture with the circles, right? Now you wouldn't want to use that for that, but maybe later if you just want to have fun with the shapes. Okay, that's, this is actually called an amoeba, I found out a couple of years ago. That's a, that's a fun shape. And then this one kind of looks like a wave. Kind of reminds me of that shirt that Connor has the, that he likes so much with the waves. And you like the picture. Okay, so it's kind of fun. If, if you don't have a ruler, you can go around your house and see if you can find anything else that maybe you could trace lines on. Or maybe if you ask your parents, you... Maybe they have some of these. These are all things that uh, people who are artists, but also architects and engineers use to draw. Um, and later on, when you go to high school, you're gonna be taking geometry and you might be using, you'll definitely be using rulers and other things to measure because geometry is about lines that intersect and all sorts of fun things like that. And that's later on. So let's start our painting, okay? So one thing, one thing you'll notice about Pierre Mondrian's paintings is, if I can find the one that I did, oh, here it is. He, he left white, he left white squares. He didn't paint, you could do another painting where you painted all the squares, that would be fun too. But for him, he wanted to leave some white space kind of it, it just kind of shows the the bright colors a little bit more so we use white and black too so if you wanted to do if you wanted to do a Pierre Mondrian painting in that style you don't want to color all the squares okay I'm gonna start with yellow because yellow is the lightest color um, and I'm just gonna decide that maybe I'll do I'll do this one my brush is a little it's a little stiff from doing it yesterday. I didn't clean it very well. I'm not going to do it too slowly because I don't want to take the whole time doing this. Um, let's see. So I did a, like a long rectangle. Hmm, what other one should I do? How about I'll go over here and do this rectangle up here dip into my paint okay I had a lot of fun doing it yesterday all right I have another I have another rectangle or square maybe I'll go down and do this square right in the middle here okay if you go over into the other square don't worry about it you can always cover it up and maybe I'll do one more, one more square. Since I have, since I have a lot of yellow over here, maybe I'll do this big one yellow. Okay. Oops, I went a little bit over in the other line, but I'm not going to worry about it. Uh, what do you think? Should I add? No, I'm not going to add any more. I think that's going to be it. I've got a newspaper down here to put my brush. And then I'm going to do 
maybe I'll do the red next, okay? So let's see, red, which, which rectangular square do you think? How about this one right here, this little one right here? I got a little bit bigger brush. Okay, do you like that? And then maybe, maybe down here, maybe this one. And, hmm, I don't know. Which one should I do? Maybe I'll do this great big one right here. This is really nice red paint, I have to say. It's a lot of fun to paint with it. Should I do another one? Oh, I'm kind of tempted to do another one, but I don't think I'm going to. Let's see how many, how many, uh, I did four yellow, one, two, three, four. I did three red, one, two, three. Um, I think I'm gonna leave, leave some more spaces for the blue. So I've got my, my water. I'm gonna rinse my brush off. I have my tomato juice water again. Not that I even like tomato juice, but it's kind of fun to say that. I got my newspaper, kind of brush my brush off. All right, now ready for blue. Okay, so here's my nice blue color. A little bit of, a little bit of uh, arugula in here. I'm not sure how that happened. All right, so blue. Oh, right away, I kind of want to do this blue. I like that big, that big rectangle. It's kind of hard. It's kind of hard to leave the white spaces because it is so much fun to paint this and you know, I kind of, there's a part of me that, part of me that wants to paint all the squares, but I won't. And I can see that I, I can see I, I did get a little bit into here, so I'll just kind of take my finger and wipe it off, but that's all right, right? It's kind of part of my painting. All right, so I need more blue. Now what, what once rectangle should I paint? How about this one right here? I'll go up here. This is a, a long vertical, like our vertical line, right? And that one. And then maybe one more. Oh, such a hard decision. Uh, let's see. Let's do... Let's do this one right here, right down here, this long, this is a horizontal rectangle. Okay, so you can see, I'm gonna leave the rest of the spaces um, white, okay? And how many blue spaces did I color rectangles? One, two, three. So I colored, I painted three yellow and three blue and I mean, sorry, four yellow, three blue, and three red, okay? And I left, let's see how many spaces I left white. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So you'll notice on his paintings, I didn't count, but you could maybe look online and see if you could get a big, like a big blow up picture of it. Um, maybe you could see if he has more white spaces than anything else. It could be because he really likes to leave that art, that white part. And then, like I said, ladybugs, um, when I made this line, this heart here, and a lot of you know how to do it, uh, I used, I used some slanted lines here. Do you see how the lines are? These lines, these horizontal lines are straight up and down, but these are a little slanted, which is kind of fun. So I think the heart would be a really fun picture to color and I think after I say goodbye to you guys I'm going to maybe do my own heart picture because uh, it looks like it just I just want to I really want to paint it or I could color it or I could use anything like that um, and I bet uh, if your parents have any time they might want to do one of these because they really are one of the funnest paint, funnest paintings to do. Let's see if I have anything else that, oh, yes, yeah, so 
you can do this. Um, you can also do this with um, little squares that you color. I mean that you that you cut out, and you can glue them in different spaces. Now I left some white. I wasn't really finished with this picture, but I could. Um, might be a little tricky here with the wet paint, but I could take my black marker, and I could. I could go, you know, like this here. I can't really do it standing up, but I could make it thicker. Let me make it a little bit thicker here. And then I could make the black marks around the shapes, right? And I just glued these on the paper. So you can do them with construction paper. Again, you could do this with felt. You could have, you could cut out the shapes and just, um, let's see, I have a, I have a black piece of felt here. I could cut out, I could cut out the shapes and I could put them on that. Um, let's see, I also found these in our art bin. And you remember these are our squares. We have those kind of foam squares. They're a little bit three dimensional. And so you could take a piece of, of black felt or white and you could, you could make a pattern with these. And tomorrow, we are going to be talking about patterns uh, in, for math. And I really think um, now looking at that, I, re I really want to do some red, yellow, and blue patterns. Because we've been talking about that with Roy Lichtenstein and Pierre Mondrian now. Okay? Okay, ladybugs. I hope you have a great day. I, I can't wait to see all your wonderful art pro projects. And Miss Carla's doing a really fun one too that she does every year. That um, there's just, it's just really fun to, to see. The, it's about the book she read you. I can't really remember the artist now. Um, oh, Magritte. Yes, Magritte, which was a Jeopardy question last night. Um, and my husband thought I was very smart because I knew the answer. And I only knew the answer because I had just watched Miss Carla's video. Anyway, uh, have a great day and uh, we will get together tomorrow to do some math and some patterns, okay? All right, thank you ladybugs. I'm gonna try not to knock over my tomato juice here. <laughs>